going to go over how to put medications um, down an NG tube. So again, this is if your patient is having problems where they can't swallow and we need to give them either liquid medication or if it's a pill, you're going to have to crush it, dissolve it, and then be able to put it down. So for today, we're going to do a liquid medication. So I'm going to come into the room. I'm going to do my hand hygiene wash my hands, introduce myself um, to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, can you tell me your name and date of birth? Okay, and I'm Tressa, I'm going to be your nurse today and we're going to give you your medications. So for today, we're gonna give him some um, guaifesin, which is a uh, cough medication. So we're going to explain all of our side effects. We're going to explain um, why we're giving it. So, you know, this medication, it may make you feel a little bit tired, but it's um, going to help you so you don't cough, maybe help you sleep a little bit better. Um, if you have any problems, um, do you have any allergies to any medications? We just want to make sure that we are checking him and that we are giving him, um, that we're checking all of our fibroids. So first off, we're going to come in and we're going to take our medication and we're gonna verify it with our medication administration record. We wanna make sure that we're doing our five rights. So we verified his right name and date of birth. We wanna make sure we have our right medication. Um, for this one, we're going to be giving five mLs of our medication. So we would double check that with our MAR. Um, so we have our right dose, we have the right medication. It's the right time the doctor ordered it to be given and we'll say it's 3.30 right now and the doctor ordered it to be given at 3.30. So we've gone in and done all of that. Um, and we know that it's right route because the physician ordered it to be put down the NG tube. Again, when you're doing liquid medications, you're going to get down right even with it and you're going to pour your medication. We're gonna do five mLs. And we're going to make sure that we do an assessment on our patient. We wanna to listen to bowel sounds. If your patient has absent bowel sounds, you're not going to wanna to put anything down um, down their NG tube because it's not going to um, be metabolized. So we want to make sure that their, their bowels are working. And if they're not, we want to make sure we let notify the doctor, don't put anything down there. So again, you're going to listen in all four quadrants. So lifting up the gown and he has a dressing, but you'd take your umbilicus and you would um, listen in all four quadrants. Again, you need to be hearing something um, for him to be normal bowel sounds. We want to be hearing sounds in each quadrant uh, about five to 10 in a minute. If you're not hearing anything five minutes in each quadrant, then that would be absent. That's when we're going to call the doctor. So we've listened to bowel sounds. We have educated our patient. We've prepped our medications. We've done our hand hygiene. We're gonna put our gloves on and we're gonna put our patient in high fowlers. The reason we want our patient in high fowlers position is we don't want them to have the risk of aspiration. So if they're laying back, we don't want anything to come back up their esophagus. So we're gonna put him all the way sitting straight up. Okay. And we're gonna cover him with a chucks just in case any of our liquid spills or any medication. So we've got our medication and we're also gonna bring in just a cup of tap water, lukewarm tap water. We, again, not too hot, not too cold. Um, it doesn't have to be sterile because it's just going into the stomach. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check placement, okay? So with your NG tube, these this is capped with both of these on here. Now, if you just take this off and you have a 60C syringe, it's not going to fit. This little port right here, you plug in, and that is an adapter so you can fit this bigger syringe on. You need the 60C syringe because we wanna know how much aspirate is left in his stomach. That's what's left from whatever the previous feeding was, whatever the previous medications were. Let's say he had um, some Tylenol given three hours ago and we draw out the aspirate from his stomach and he still has little pieces of Tylenol we know that he's um, not digesting correctly and that stuff is getting left in his stomach. So we definitely want to um, return the aspirate and notify the physician. We don't want to put anything else down there. So we're gonna just see what is in his stomach. So right now there's not a whole lot in there, okay? So we would we'd check that and then you can return that back to the stomach. If there was 20 or 30 cc's of um, just like stomach contents, gastric juices, you would just document that, document the color, and we always return it. The reason that we return that gastric content back to their stomach is if you're pulling off all their gastric juices, um, you're actually gonna uh, cause a problem with their acid-base balance. So we always wanna make sure we're returning everything back to their stomach. So we know it's in the right place. 
We know that um, there's no uh, residual in his stomach that we need to worry about. So now we're okay to start giving the medication. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm gonna show you one way by gravity and then one way by drying it up. So the first one, when we're doing it by gravity, and you'll notice anytime I unhook this syringe, you'll see I'm clamping the tube like this. The reason for that is if you leave it like this, and there's a lot of stuff, you may have stuff start leaking out. So you'll just kind of pinch that tube each time that you do it. So the one that we're gonna start with is by gravity. So you take this plunger out, you put this here, and then you're actually going to fill this up with, we're gonna flush with 30, then we're gonna give our med, and then we're gonna flush with about 30 to 60 cc's of water after that. So you can take your tap water and actually just pour it right into your syringe and you can let it just go and you'll see it'll slowly come down. You do not want this syringe to go more than 18 inches above because if I hold it up really high like this, it's gonna drain really, really fast. And yeah, that's great for time, but it's not comfortable for your patient. So no more than 18 inches. So now we've flushed and you need to make sure for um, eyes and nose that you actually keep track of how much you've put in there. So we've put our 30 cc's of water flush in there. We're gonna put five cc's of our medication in and then we're going to flush again with 30 cc's of water. And that's why we have a pad in case we spill a little bit. So then you'll see that go down. So once this is in, I'll show you how you can actually draw up fluid and do it the other way. Okay, so again, I'm pinching my tube. So for this one, what we would do is we would put the plunger in here and you're actually going to draw up 30 cc's of water you're gonna hook it on here, and then you're going to actually push the water in. You're gonna push it slowly. Again, this is not gonna save you time if you just push it. So just slowly um, instill all 30 cc's of water. And for the sake of this video and for the sake of the mannequin's stomach, I'm not gonna push all of that in there. So once you've put all that in, then you're gonna draw up your medication, put that in, and then get 30, 30 to 60 more cc's and put that in to flush it. Okay, so we've now instilled all of our medication in here, we're gonna disconnect, we've flushed it, and you need to make sure that you clamp this. Okay, so make sure that you clamp this closed. We're going to make sure that Mr. Jones remains in high fallers for about 30 to 60 minutes. He needs to stay sitting up again so that he doesn't aspirate. We don't want any of all that fluid. We just put about 90 cc's of fluid down and we don't want it to go back up um, and cause any aspiration. We don't want it to get in his lungs. You need to make sure that you rinse your equipment. We don't want any medications um, le left in this. So you can rinse out if you're reusing these. These most of the time are disposable. You throw this away. You'll take this to your sink, put put everything in your sink, rinse it out really good. You're gonna take your gloves off, perform hand hygiene, and then you need to document. So what we need to document is the medication. We for sure need to medi the the dose um, and how we tolerated it. Um, we need to document that residual that we checked at the beginning. What color was it? How much was it? And then we need to document how much did we input into his stomach. So how much did we flush with to begin with? What? Um, how much was the medication? And then how much did we flush with at the end? Um, all of that is the appropriate documentation. Then we need to return him to his uh, comfortable position. So bed in its lowest position, high fallers. Make sure he has a call light at within reach. Keep his blankets pulled up. So, and Mr. Jones, are you comfortable? You good? Okay, do you need anything on TV? All right, if you need anything, please let me know. And then I'm good to go. <laughs>